Hi, I'm here today to demonstrate an oral exam on a dog. So I'm gonna start by just uh, introducing myself, saying hello to Kaz, and I'm gonna start uh, by kind of uh, looking over her head and face for symmetry. So first thing I'm gonna do is feel along the, uh, the skull, and I'm gonna feel her temporal muscles on the left and the right side, and make sure that there's no atrophy. <clears throat> and look at her eyes. So I wanna look at her left and her right eyes to make sure that they are symmetric, that neither one of the eyes is um, exophthalmic or bulging out or inophthalmic um, bulging in. <clears throat> I lift the lid and look at the sclera to make sure they're nice and white, that they're not red, make sure there's no drainage or exudate, that she's not squinting. Um, I also look at her face for any signs of swelling. If a dog had a tooth root abscess, um, usually they get a large swelling asymmetrically right about this location on their face. I look at her nose, make sure that it's not dry, that her nostrils are symmetric, that there's no nasal discharge or bleeding. And then I also back it up. look at her ears. I want to make sure that the pinna are symmetric, that there's no swelling or pain at the base of the ear because an otitis externa or an otitis media could cause pain when we go to open the jaw. I feel her lymph nodes. These are her submandibular lymph nodes, just to make sure there's no swelling. I look at her lips, make sure there's no sores. I look at the chin, make sure there's no sores or pustules. I um, also do a little test just to make sure neurologically she can feel um, my finger. If she does not feel me touching her nostrils and react, that can be a sign of a neurologic deficit. And then I lift the lip. So I lift the lip and I stretch the lips. The lips are very stretchy. So I stretch the lips so I can get a good look at her gums and her teeth. Do the same thing up front and the same thing on the other side. I lift those lips, make sure that there's nothing abnormal on the gums, no growths, no ulcers, no sores. Good girl. Okay, so I said before that um, if she had um, an ear infection, it might cause pain when she opens her jaw. And there are other disease processes that can cause pain when you open her mouth as well. Uh, dental disease, mastic masticatory muscle myositis, um, neck pain, all of those things might cause uh, discomfort when you open the mouth. Now, dogs don't like to have this done. They don't like to have their mouth pried open. So I'm gonna just do it for a quick second, have a quick look at the oral cavity, and then leave her be. Okay, so when you're brushing their teeth, it's very important to remember, you do not have to pry their mouth open like this because they hate that. You don't wanna have to do that every day. So when we're brushing their teeth, we raise their lip, take the toothbrush, pretend my finger's a toothbrush, gentle circular massaging motions at the tooth gum margin, and you go ahead and stretch the lip and get back there and get your toothbrush in there as well. We usually don't require you to try to get on the back sides of the teeth or the inside of the mouth, just the outsides. But we do wanna make sure to get the uppers and the lowers the, and the, the backs as well as the fronts. You may have to pry the mouth open a tiny bit to get, to get into the back and brush at that tooth gum margin. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, all right, she's way back in the corner, so I'm gonna sit down for a minute. And so um, um, we always wanna look at this area um, there's a little groove here, and in some breeds, it's a very deep groove, and uh, an example of that would be a bulldog or a boxer, and they can get these fine hairs when they're licking, their, licking themselves stuck in that groove, and it can cause a really bad odor. Um, so when we're looking at the teeth themselves, we're looking at the gums to see is there any redness or swelling. We're checking for any odor does she have bad breath or halitosis? We're looking for the occlusion, and we'll talk about that here just in a minute. We're looking for broken teeth. We're looking for calculus or tartar, which is the brown stuff that builds up on the teeth. And we're looking for missing teeth. So we're gonna talk about all of those things. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with um, her occlusion. And so the first thing I wanna say is her lower jaw and her upper jaw are the right length. Um, there are three different classes of occlusion in dogs. 
class one, two, and three. Class three is in, uh, an, an underbite where the lower jaw sticks out longer than the upper. A class two is where um, they have an overbite or a parrot mouth where the upper jaw sticks out farther than the lower jaw. And the third malocclusion is where the jaws are the same length, it's just a couple of teeth are out of alignment. In her case, she has what I call striking teeth. So her upper incisors are supposed to come over the lower incisors just by a couple millimeters, and it's called a scissor bite, and her teeth actually strike. So her incisors are worn down a little bit. In some cases, that can cause pain and require extraction of those teeth. Um, let's start by um, looking at the gums next, and I'm looking to see, does she have any redness? And along her incisors, not too bad. She does have a little bit of redness, a little bit of gingivitis at her canine, and you can see that little tiny bit of brown material um, right at the gum line, and that is tartar or calculus. And then we can see the rest of her teeth, not too bad. Her fourth premolar, the big tooth here also, very mild gingivitis and a little bit of calculus on those teeth. On the lower ones, it can be a little hard to check when they're awake, but I don't see any heavy buildup on her lower canines or incisors and not so much on her lower teeth as well. Okay, um, I'm gonna take a quick look at her tongue. I usually lift the tongue to look under it, make sure there's no masses or sores or ulcers. Good girl, you're being very good, being very good. Okay, good girl. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go through uh, a quick charting of the teeth. So we start at the midline, and we're gonna name the arcades um, um, by the triadian system. So we're basically gonna name them um, based on the uh, right upper arcade being 100, the left upper being 200, the left lower being 300, and the right lower being 400. Adult dogs have 42 teeth or they should. So we start right at the midline and we're gonna count teeth. We're gonna say this is 101, 1, 2, 3, 104. One, the four is always the canine, so that's 104. 105, six, seven, eight, and the eight's the fourth premolar um, or the carnasial tooth, so it's big. And then after that, we have nine and 10 which you can't really see too good unless you open the mouth. But she has all of her teeth on the 100 arcade present. Now let's count those same teeth, calling them by their names. And this is the um, anatomical charting system. And that would be right upper incisor one, right upper incisor two, right upper incisor three, right upper canine, um, right upper premolar one, two, three, four, and then um, right upper molar one, and then way in the back is two. You could also say, instead of upper, you could say right maxillary, um, and then name the tooth. On the lower arcade, we also start at the midline, but now we're on the 400 arcade. We would say 401, two, three, four, being the canine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. The big one on the bottom is the carnasial. Um, so there's a rule of fours and a rule of nines, and the rule of fours means that um, the, fourth, the fourth tooth in the arcade is always a canine, and the rule of nines is the ninth tooth is always molar one. Whether it's upper or lower, if it's 109, if it's 209, 309, or 409, it's always going to be molar number one. If it's 104, 204, 304, or 404, it's always going to be a canine tooth. Okay, you're doing so good. I'm going to have to give you a treat when this is all over. I'm going to have to give you a treat. So, um, because of her striking teeth, I would consider her to have a class one malocclusion because these incisors are a little bit um, more palatable, palatal or uh, towards the back of the mouth than they should be. They should be a teeny bit more anterior um, overlapping those lower teeth. Um, let's see, so we've charted. Uh, we also uh, would um, say how much calculus or how much gingivitis we think an animal has and we can grade the teeth um, 
zero, no gingivitis, uh, or no calculus, um, all the way up to four. And I would probably grade her a one, possibly a two with a couple of locations. Um, I want to point out um, the attached gingiva. The attached gingiva, if you can see this line that goes almost goes across the mouth, you see that little line there? Um, that is the line, anything below that is attached gingiva. Anything above that line is mucosa. That's just oral mucosa from this line up and from this line down is attached gingiva. The free gingiva is a little tiny space, little tiny space that we would be able to evaluate when they're anesthetized with an instrument called a probe. And that is the where the gingiva along here is not attached to the bone and you can actually stick a little probe in there, which we would never do awake. And we can measure um, the sulcus, which is the space between the tooth and the, um, and the, and the free gingiva. And uh, if the space is larger than it should be, um, in dogs, one to three millimeters, in cats, one half to one millimeter, then that would be considered a pocket or a disease process. And that would be related to periodontal disease. So um, I think that is almost everything we wanted to talk about. I'm gonna real briefly tell you about where we would um, place a nerve block. And if we were doing a cranial mandibular nerve block, we can feel right about here. We, if, you, if you press down, you can feel an indentation. And that is the um, 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 infraorbital foramen. And that is where we would direct the injection to block premolar one forward on this side. And then way back here, you can feel a little tiny notch and that's where we direct the needle for the caudal um, maxillary nerve block on the mandibular, cranial mandibular nerve block, we usually find this little frenulum. You can see this little place where the gum is attached to the jaw, right here. This little frenulum, and just, just beneath that little frenulum, you can reach down and feel a little um, indentation, and that is the mandibular foramen, and, um, or the mental foramen, and that is where we would inject to uh, anesthetize premolar forward and then way back here um, you can either you can do the caudal mandibular nerve block one of two places you can go outside of the mouth and just feel the medial aspect of the jaw and go in that way or my preference is when they're anesthetized I actually go in on the medial aspect of their back tooth and put the injection in there so I think she's been a very good girl and been very tolerant of me going through her mouth um, and doing so much in there. Um, so we're gonna give her a break, but I hope that is a good introduction to an oral exam for you.